Kathy Shields, ESC Program Specialist for Speech and Language, and today we're going to look at how to conduct hearing and vision screens um, for the purpose of looking at ESC exceptionalities. Um, what you're going to do is, first of all, you have a bag at each school. It's housed at each school, so you should be aware of where that is. And inside, you'll find the directions of how to conduct the screen. <clears throat> First of all, what you need to do is make sure your machine is plugged in and then turned on. Okay, you'll see that the, the dial is set to the right and we're going to be screening the frequencies of 1000, 2000, 4000 at 25 dB. So the dial should be set there. Um, you should also have it set on pulse so the student will hear pulses of sound and they are going to raise their hand when they hear the sound. In order for them to, to, to present the sound, you're going to put, push the tone button. Okay, so then you're going to want to explain to the student what they're going to be doing. And so um, what you would tell them is you're going to hear some little sounds. And every time you hear a sound, you're going to raise your hand for me so I know you hear it. You're going to put the headphones on with red on the right and blue on the left. So I remember red, round, right, and put that on his ear. Does that feel comfortable? Okay. And you're going to face the student away from the machine so they're not seeing you present the tone. And then you would start at the 1000 frequency and push the tone button and wait for the student to respond by raising their hand. Okay, and then you change to the next frequency of 2000. And then the next frequency of 4000. Okay, so the student heard all three frequencies, so we're gonna switch to the left side. If the student doesn't hear it the first time, you can present it a second time. <clears throat> 1,000, 2,000, and 4,000. Okay. All right. And so the results are going to be um, recorded on the MTSS form, page two of the nine page packet. And you would just record whether it's a pass or fail under the hearing part. Now if the student does not pass the screen, you would make the referral to the speech language pathologist who's at the school site and they'll do a follow up. And if that um, if the student still does not pass that screen, then a referral will be made to the hearing and balance clinic and we have a um, contract with those folks so they'll do those for free for students for us. Um, otherwise you can also let the referral coordinator know and they can get a referral in as well. Okay. Um, next, we're going to do the vision screens um, with Sarah Molinax. Hi, I'm Sarah Molinax, the school counselor and referral coordinator at Buck Lake, and I'm going to walk you through a vision screening. Uh, the first thing that I've done is I went ahead and set up the room um, in your kits that you can find at your school. Inside, you'll find a rope to measure out 10 feet. So I went ahead and I put our Sloan letter chart up on the wall and I've measured out 10 feet and put a piece of tape on the ground that our student can stand on. So we're going to start with that. Now if you had a student who is younger than six years old and the student we have working with us is older than six years old, there's a couple of different tools that you can use in your kit instead of the Sloan letters. There's a symbol chart and there's also the HOTV chart. And there's also some matching cards to go along with that if they need help instead of you know, being able to verbalize what the symbols or the letters are. So we're gonna go ahead and, and I'm gonna walk our student through doing a vision screening. If you'll go ahead and put your heels on that piece of tape right there. All right, and because our student is over six years old, we're gonna have him read the 2030 line if he were under six years old, I would have him read the 2040 line. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to point to the 2030 line. And without pointing to the each individual letter, I'm just going to have him read straight across, starting with both eyes. So go ahead. H O C Z R. And go ahead to the next side. K D S V N. Great. All right, and now we need to take a look at both eye individually. So I'm gonna walk over here and in your kit, you will also find some glasses where one eye is covered up with each. Um, if it were an older student, 
I'm going to use these with our student today, but sometimes they don't want to wear these and you can use a paper cup in its place. So I'm going to go ahead and let's put these on and we're going to cover up your left eye first so that your right eye can read. We're going to read the same line and I'm going to point over here and I want you to do the same thing. H O C Z R K D S V N. Great. All right. So now we're going to switch and we're going to cover up the other eye. All right. And same line. We're going to read it straight across again. H O C Z R. K D S V N. Great, thank you. All right, the next step that we would do, uh, if there is a student who is over age six, we would also look at farsightedness, and we would use the two point two plus lens glasses. And he's going to put these on, and we're going to look at both eyes. We're going to look at each eye individually. And I want you to try and read these letters for me and see what they say. And I'm going to point to that 20-30 line again. H O C Z R. Um, Are the letters clear? No. They're blurry? Okay. And it is uh, they actually would pass this if the letters are blurry. Um, and let's cover up. Just use your hand and cover up. We're going to attempt to read those letters again. And if H O C Z R K D S V N. Okay, and cover up the other eye for me. H O C Z R K D S V N. Okay, thank you. Now, if a student were under age six, we would not need to do this step of the screening. Um, if a student fails a screening, if they pass a screening, those results are recorded on that page two of the MTSS summary form. And if the student fails, then you can bring that form to your school's referral coordinator and they can take the steps from there. Um, that's all for our vision screening. If you have any further questions about all of this, you can talk to your school's ESE program specialist. Thank you.